It is the 27th of May, 1908. Gardian is grieving. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, has passed away the previous day, and his devout followers behold his blessed countenance for the last time. It is a time of great despair. Who will lead the community? The faithful turn to God in supplication, and it is not long before prayers are answered. The most learned among them, the most sincere and the most righteous, is elected as Khalifa. So who was this man, and what is his story? <laughs> Hazrat Mawlana Hakim Nuruddin was that blessed companion about whom the promised Messiah alayhi salam said, How would it be if every member of the community were a Nuruddin? So would it be if every heart was filled with the light of the certainty of faith. The story of this noble companion begins in 1841 at his birthplace, Bera, a small town in the Punjab. He was born to a noble family who were descendants of Hazrat Umar Farooq, Razi ta'ala anhu. His family were lovers of the Holy Qur'an, and this love for the Word of God was instilled in his heart from a very young age. Hazrat Mulana Nuruddin, Razi ta'ala anhu, excelled in his studies and his thirst for knowledge took him all over India and Arabia. With the passage of time, he became a well-versed Islamic scholar and earned such fame in natural medicine that he came to be known as Hakim ul umat which means the best physician among the people. In addition to acquiring repute as an outstanding physician, he was known to be a learned, divine and an exemplary believer who had a great passion for preaching Islam, and it was due to this passion that he came to know of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. Hazrat Mulana Nuruddin, razi ta'ala anhu, had long been searching for a perfect spiritual guide. In 1884, he came to know of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, through his writings in defense of Islam against attacks from followers of different religions. In order to meet the promised Messiah, he travelled to Qadian and was convinced of his truth as soon as he saw him. Following this, he was in constant touch with the promised Messiah and in March 1889, he became the first person to pledge allegiance to the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. Hazrat Mulana Nuruddin, razi ta'ala anhu, remained a devoted servant of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, and would visit him regularly. Under the instructions of the Promised Messiah, he came to stay in Qadian without ever thinking of his hometown. In Qadian, he was wholly dedicated to serving the Promised Messiah. He would give lectures on the Holy Qur'an and Hadith, and provide service as a physician to all. Furthermore, he served as a teacher in Dalimul Islam High School. So sincere was his devotion that the Promised Messiah salam, once said, that he is in such accord with him as the pulse is in accord with the breath. The promised Messiah salam, passed away on the 26th of May 1908 after a short illness. A few years prior to his death, he had published a booklet by the name of The Will, in which he offered his community the consolation that after his departure, God would help them with the second manifestation of his power, as it had happened at the death of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when God had raised Hazrat Abu Bakr as his second manifestation to rally the Muslims. Thus, Hazrat Hakim Mulvi Nuruddin Razi ta'ala Anho was raised as the second manifestation after the promised Messiah alayhi salam, and was elected the first Khalifa of the movement under divine guidance. Khilafat kya hai k-
Divine grace enabled him to perform in his capacity as Khalifa al Masih so well that by the time of his death in 1914, the movement had been fully safeguarded against disruption and disintegration. The majority of members remained loyal and devoted to the Khalifa, but a small number of people who were under the influence of Maulvi Muhammad Ali began propagating their thoughts against the Khalifa and raising the question that does the authority lie with the Khalifa or the Anjuman, which was the administrative body set up by the promised Messiah alayhi salam. They also spread the idea that the only function of the Khalifa is to lead the prayer services and funeral services and make announcements of weddings and to take the covenant of new entrants into the movement. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih I refuted these ideas and emphatically clarified the true concept of Khilafat. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih was a man of learning and knowledge and fully understood the role education played in the moral training and propagation of Islam. Thus, in 1909, the foundation stone of madrasa e Ahmadiyya, an institute of theological studies, was laid. Hazur was very concerned about serving humanity and helping the poor. For this purpose, he established a scheme to provide houses to the poor. He also set up a small dispensary, which later grew into a hospital. During his Khilafat, a number of magazines and newspapers were established, one of the most prominent being Al-Fazl, which is still being published to this day. One of the milestones of his Khilafat was the establishment of the first Ahmadiyya Muslim mission in 1914, and the first missionary sent to England was Chaudhry Fateh Muhammad Siyal. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih I passed away on Friday the 13th of March 1914. Over 2,000 Ahmadis converged at the Aqsa Mosque, where, in accordance with his will, he stated that his successor should be a righteous and devoted man. Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Anhu, was elected as the Khalifa. The newly elected Khalifa then led the funeral prayers of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih I, and he was laid to rest in the Bahishti Maqbara, next to the tomb of his holy master and benefactor, the promised Messiah, alayhi salam.